Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin from Sugar MD, the Trusted Diabetes Channel. Today we are talking about vitamin E. I'm sure that question came to your mind at some point. Should I take vitamin E? Are there any benefits? And the literature is kind of confusing. So I did the work for you, did all the re literature research, and today we are going to touch base on a lot of things about vitamin E. It's not going to be too long, don't worry. We're going to summarize the daily intake, recommended daily intake of vitamin E, the sources of vitamin E, the problems associated with vitamin E deficiency, and how much vitamin E do you really need if you want to replace it, and the consequences or risks associated with vitamin E, and actually we're going to dig into a little bit more into the potential benefits and if they are real. Let's get started guys. So let's start with the recommended intake of vitamin E. Actually, it is not difficult to get vitamin E from food sources. It's only 15 milligram of vitamin E or alpha tocopherol. And this is, if you're having a healthy diet, uh, you will be able to get that easily. So 15 milligram basically is what you need as an adult. Now, where do you get the vitamin E from? Well, for from a diabetic standpoint, uh, you should be able to get your vitamin E from nuts, seeds, green leafy vegetables. Well, it is found in grains and, and some milk and stuff like that, but you don't want to overboard. And a lot of vegetable oils has vitamin have vitamin E as well, but again, you don't want to be having too much vegetable oil. And if you want to stick with, a, with an oil, that would be the olive oil as we discussed before. So why do we really need vitamin E to begin with, right? Because vitamin E is an antioxidant. And uh, what does antioxidant mean? Well, when we produce energy from food, from glucose, from whatever, fat, protein, your body creates something called the reactive oxygen species. These are unpaired electrons and they basically touch anything and oxidizes them. Oxidation is like rusting. So that's how you get old, that's how you get cardiovascular disease, that's how you get cancer. That's pretty much what we die from, right? Either heart attack or cancer, you know, eliminating the accidents and all that. But basically that is what kills people. So since we are trying to prolong life and have a healthy life, not just prolong life. We want to make sure that we have more antioxidants which will protect you from the oxidative damage uh, that comes naturally from the food. Some foods create more oxidative damage than the others as uh, xenobiotics for example or the unhealthy foods that we have been discussing for the last two years in this channel. So but to be honest with you you need to arm yourself with more antioxidants. Now vitamin E happens to be one of the antioxidants. That's why you know it makes sense to think that okay well I'm gonna take more vitamin D and and suddenly everything will be good. Well, uh, that's that may not be the case. Again, I believe in, and not just I believe in, and I think that is a fact in the universe, uh, the moderation, having the middle road is always the good thing for you. You don't want to go excessive with anything. And I'll talk to you about the complications or risks about excessive vitamin E. So, for example, I'll just jump to it, actually. So, if you are on blood thinners, it could be aspirin, Plavix, warfarin, you name it, Coumadin, Berlanta, just came to my mind. But anyway, so, if you are on these blood thinners, the high dose of vitamin E has been shown to increase the bleeding risk. So, what is a high dose of vitamin E? That would be around, I think the studies show that 400 units of vitamin E. Now, if you take less than that, would you get benefit? Now, double-blinded studies do not necessarily show reduction in cardiovascular disease or cancer, and it has been studied multiple times. You may find one or two studies here and there that show some possible benefit, but when you look at the overall picture, look at all the studies, really the benefit is very this very minimal, uh, if anything, uh, and most studies do not show any benefit, and there is some increased risk of of bleeding if you are already on blood thinners. So I think what you should do for vitamin E guys, eat more foods, the nuts, seeds, green leafy vegetables, 
that have the vitamin E. But if you're taking multivitamin and there's some vitamin E in there that's not excessive, uh, not more than 400 units, I would recommend that that's, that's, that's fine, especially if you're kind of a steak and potato type of guy uh, and you're not really getting any... Um, you know vegetables or anything like that and um, then you may want to get some supplementation now if you uh, are vitamin e deficient it can cause cognitive decline it can cause the macular degeneration in the eyes it can increase the risk of potential cardiovascular disease or cancer formation but again vitamin e is just only one player among all the other antioxidants so there's a lot of other antioxidants we talk about all the time so you don't necessarily have to be hung up on the vitamin e so uh, vitamin e deficiency like clear-cut vitamin e deficiency is very uncommon so as a result you know you're not going to suffer the the vitamin e deficiency diseases uh, so to speak so there is, uh, there is a role of vitamin E in immune um, regulation as well. So maybe it can increase your risk of infections. But again, that can, that's not a um, easy claim to make. So sometimes uh, the things in theory doesn't necessarily translate in practice. So it's good to know that the vitamin E is an antioxidant. You should have vitamin, D in your, vitamin E in your diet. There is no reason to check vitamin E in your blood, but a higher uh, vitamin E in your diet uh, and maybe supplementally can be beneficial. But, uh, but if you're having a good diet, which helps you with your blood sugar regulation, blood pressure regulation, you will have adequate, uh, adequate amount of vitamin E anyway. So I'm not big on just buying a bunch of supplements and vitamins instead of a good diet. So you should, you should still have a good diet because if you don't have a good diet, you're inviting the bad guys. So even if you're trying to load on the good guys like vitamin E and other supplements and stuff but if you are if you have a lot of enemies your body is subject to a lot of bad food then you're not gonna win that war anyways guys I hope this video is helpful give a thumbs up share this video and we'll see you in the next one
Guys, vitamin C is found in berries, citrus fruits, green vegetables. Well, the great sources among the, the green vegetables are asparagus, avocados, the beets, blackcurrants, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cantaloupe, collards, dulls, grapefruit, kale, lemons, mangoes, mustard greens, onions, oranges, papayas, green peas, sweet peppers, persimmons, pineapple, radishes, spinach, strawberries, tomatoes, turnip greens, guys, or the girls, or the ladies. One of my uh, viewers said, You always say guys, that's so annoying. When I say guys, I mean all of you. You know, guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen. Just to make it informal. So, but the bottom line is, yeah, so uh, most people go for, when I say vitamin C, they go for orange juice. Well, freshly squid orange juice is okay, but when you have diabetes, that can really hit you hard. So you have to be very careful about the amount you're getting. So, but as I said, the vitamin C is so common in so many other foods. Foods, you don't necessarily need to drink that orange juice plus we talked about this before we don't want to do processed oranges or uh, I mean orange juices at all so a few comments about the vitamin C you know a lot of people use vitamin C to help prevent the common colds but the studies again and again shows that actually it doesn't really help much with the preventing the colds but if you have the cold and having vitamin C extra can help reduce the number of days that you're having cold and as you know when you have cold your diabetes goes off the chart you know anytime you're sick your body's under stress when you're under stress your body squeezes a lot of cortisol when you squeeze a lot of cortisol any physical or mental stress you are in trouble your blood sugar will be high and anytime you're under stress your body needs more antioxidants and there you go vitamin c helps there it can help your let's say your common cold instead of seven days it can reduce it down to five days which is if you think about it two days of not having a common cold is pretty good deal now who are are really vitamin C deficient or more likely? Well, the guys and girls who drink alcohol and the smokers are more likely than anyone else. If you are on analgesics, like uh, painkillers, if you are on antidepressants, anticoagulants, contraceptives, the steroids, all these things can deplete your vitamin C levels and that as a result, if you are on these agents, you may want to use more vitamin C. So what are the caution? Well, the caution is this. When you overdo the vitamin C, especially more than 2000 milligrams, actually it can turn it against you and do the exact opposite. Instead of becoming an antioxidant it creates oxidative damage again i always talk about the moderation 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 you know if you are deficient you're in trouble if you overdo it you're in trouble so you don't overdo it so never ever exceed more than 500 milligrams now what is another problem with vitamin c well if you are taking more than 500 milligrams of vitamin c especially glucose sensor users you know those sensors that you don't have to do finger sticks and stuff they are affected from excess of vitamin C more than 500 milligrams a day tend to cause high blood sugar readings uh, falsely high so actually you may be low but it may actually show high so that may not be great for you because you know you want to know when you're low uh, and it may cause uh, under treatment of low blood sugars or if you're taking aspirin for example for cardiovascular risk reduction and if you take vitamin C together it can cause a lot of stomach irritation can cause ulcers reflux and problems like that which you may already have so you may want to make sure that if you're on aspirin at least take vitamin C in low dose or just eat take it from the food instead of taking a supplement which can cause stomach irritation if you're pregnant you don't want to take too much vitamin C because you may cause your baby to become dependent on vitamin C if you're taking excessive vitamin C during pregnancy then your baby may end up with problems like scurvy due to dependence on excessive vitamin C. And avoid using chewable vitamin C because they can cause en enamel problems like gum line problems. So that's another thing that I have to caution you about. 
But the bottom line overall, having around 100 milligrams of vitamin C, especially from the foods we discussed, uh, definitely helps. If you are not a vegetable and fruit person and, and you're a steak and potato type of guy or girl, you may want to take some, uh, some vitamin C. Esterified vitamin C appears to be a little bit better. But guys, uh, vitamin C needs to be taken in moderation, not too much, less than 500 milligram a day in total, and that can help lower uh, your blood sugars a little bit as well, not drastically by any means, but if you're especially deficient, can help your insulin resistance. And we talked about the other benefits and risks. So guys, I hope that video helps. Remember to give a thumbs up and share, and we'll see you in the next video.